All praise is due to Allah who is magnificent in His essence, perfect in His attributes, undeniable in His presence. All praise is due to Allah who has the most magnificent names, a praise that is forever for Him, a praise that eternally remains. May He send peace and blessings in their most perfect fashion. May He send greetings and salutations that are complete and everlasting upon the best of His creation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May He perfect His rank and elevate His station for He taught us what we did not know. And He gave and He gave and He gave because He loved us so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah as He deserves to be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. And Allah says, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and produced from that soul its mate and made from their combination many men and women. So fear your Lord whom you ask each other by and by the ties of kinship. Verily Allah is ever watchful over you. And Allah says, O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct. He will correct for you your sins and forgive you. He will correct for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they are indeed victorious, they are successful. To proceed. It has been a very trying three weeks for all of us. And I wanted, as we watched an incredible pain as an ummah of children, is attacked with no respite in Gaza. I connected more deeply with a hadith that I've read I don't know how many times in my life. And I believe we're all experiencing that, where people are reading the Quran and they are connecting with verses as if they are seeing them for the first time, as if layers are becoming unraveled to them for the first time because they are seeing these verses while experiencing just a fraction of the intensity that these verses were revealed regarding. And so people two weeks ago were passing around verses from, uh, from Surah Ali Imran about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects and chooses those who are martyred and do not even think to call them dead. Rather, they are alive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And beyond the Muslim community, non-Muslims are beginning to look at the Qur'an because of what they see of Iman in 4K. It's unbelievable. This faith, this resilience that the people in Palestine have, what could be causing them to say all praise is due to God even as they're holding up their dead children? And so we're connecting with the Qur'an and we're connecting with the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ at a different level. And today I want to present a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ presented to a child. And many times when you're reading this hadith, the commentary will say, look at this great, great hadith that Rasulullah ﷺ gave to Ibn Abbas who was only 9 or 10 years old. But now as we're watching what is unfolding in Gaza, we're saying, look at the wisdom of the Prophet Sallallahu that he gave this hadith to a nine-year-old. And in fact, it is a hadith that we wish all of the children of Gaza have memorized. In fact, we wish that it is a hadith that all of our children have memorized, including everybody here. And it is the great hadith that Imam al nawi puts as the 17th hadith in his collection, actually the 19th hadith in his collection, of the 40 hadith. It's the hadith of At-Tirmidhi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Ibn Abbas, he says, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. He says, oh young boy, I am teaching you some words. I am teaching you some words. And I want you to walk away with these words because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had Ibn Abbas riding with him and he made it a point to teach this young boy these words. And Ibn Abbas made it a point to teach the world these words. He says, Ihfadillah yahfadak. Ihfadillah tajidhu tujahak. He says, Preserve Allah and Allah will preserve you. Preserve the commands of Allah, meaning, and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserving you. Guard the commandments of Allah in your life and you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Know Allah during the good times and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know you when it's difficult, when your life gets turned upside down. 
Because the reality is every single one of us is going to go through trials. There's no one who's going to have a perfect existence on this earth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create the earth to be a perfect existence for anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears in fact in the Quran by the opposite. He says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد. We've created mankind to be in a state of problems. You're in college now. Every single person here has problems. Every single one. I don't need to know you to know you have problems because you're a human being. And you had problems when you were in high school too. And you might look forward to graduating because you might have the fantasy, if you entertain the fantasy, that your problems are going to go away because now you're going to be making money and you're not going to be working for free anymore. You're going to have problems as an employee or you're going to have problems as an entrepreneur. And then when you're single, you think that all of your problems are because you're single. You need to get married. I need to get married. Then you get married and you find out that you've replaced one person's problems for two. And then it gets multiplied by the amount of children that you have. And then it just goes on and on and on and on. And there's nobody who is problem free because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed the dunya to be full of problems. But guess what? There are people who when they have problems, they have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they can call on Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, preserve the commands of Allah, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the story of Yunus when he's in the whale. Allah says, if it were not for the fact that he was from al-musabbihin, lalabitha fi batnihi ila yawm yubathun. If it wasn't for the fact that Yunus was from the people who makes tasbih, if it wasn't for the fact that he had invested in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from before, he would have stayed and resided in the belly of the whale until the day of judgment. But he had that relationship, he had that credit. And so the time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not after you get the diagnosis and after someone dies in your family and after you go bankrupt. That's not the time to invest. The time to invest in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you're secure and you're healthy and life is good and your family is good. That's the time to invest in a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what if I'm turning around after all of these problems? then the beautiful thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and merciful. And whenever you turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah accepts. But that's not the ideal for us. Ideal is that I invest heavily in the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, اِحْفَظِ اللَّهِ تَجِدْهُ تُجَاهَكَ إِذَا سَأَلْتْ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتْ فَاسْتَعِمْ بِاللَّهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you ask anyone, Ask Allah. How many problems do you have that you ask people for help with? Maybe you're graduating this year and you're looking for people to help you get employed. And so you're knocking on this person's door and all of these connections that you've made and all of these internships that you've done, you're knocking on these people's door so that you can be able to turn that into a job opportunity for yourself. And yet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if you ask anyone, Ask Allah. And if you seek the help of anyone, seek the help of Allah. So ask yourself the question, how much time do I spend asking Allah for the things that I want? All of the things that I have, and every one of us has a list of things that we say that we want. What is my share of knocking on the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I wake up in tahajjud for it? Do I make dua for it in my sujood? Today is Friday, we all know that there is an hour on Friday in which your dua is accepted. Do I seek it out? Majority of scholars say that it's in the last hour of Friday. Do I put an alarm on my phone an hour before sunset that I sit aside for five, 10 minutes and I just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance on that exam or to be accepted into that program or whatever it is that I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. To free Palestine, do I set time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, A'jazu nas that the people who is the most enabled is the person who's unable to make dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, actually before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says. And this is a formula that we should all know. He simply says, إِنْ يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ Allah says, if Allah supports you, there is no one who can overpower you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to forsake you, فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ Allah says, who is going to support you after him? If Allah is on your side, you don't lose. That's the equation. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forsakes you, you can't win. Even if you have every congressman, 
congresswoman, every senator, you have the president himself, you have all of the petitions, you have public support, you have the hashtags, you have everything going. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support is not secured, you don't win. And so it is very important that even in our activism that we make sure that the first support we are trying to secure is that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't tell you for me how disappointed I go when I go to a protest and I find that the salah is not accounted for. It's not on the program at all. Oh, it's because we're trying to make it comfortable for non-Muslims. We're trying to make it, we're trying to get, get the broadest base, the broadest coalition. Hold on a second. The greatest audience is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest support is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to say we don't take the means, not to say we don't create broad coalitions, but we recognize that the greatest factor is securing the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you ask the help of anybody, ask the help of Allah. And if you were to ask anybody, then ask Allah. And then he tells this 10-year-old boy, this 9-year-old boy, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةِ Know that if a nation or all nations were to gather together to harm you, they would not be able to harm you with anything more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you. And if the entire world were to gather to benefit you, they wouldn't benefit you with anything more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for you. That belief in destiny that gives you courage. The believers say, say, we will not be touched by anything more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us. He is our protector. And upon Allah, let the believers rely. You know, we shouldn't walk in fear. And please do not be someone who spreads fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُ بِهِ Don't be those people. Who that whenever any information comes that's fear-inducing, they spread it. Or security-inducing, they, they spread it. You just start forwarding messages. I heard that this person got beat up on campus, it was because they were Muslim. Hold on a second. Maybe they're a jerk. Maybe they didn't get beat up because they're Muslim. Maybe they were causing problems. Don't be that person who's always spreading fear. Pause. Do your research. These hearts of your believing brothers and sisters are a trust. I don't care if it's going to get you the most likes. I don't care if it's going to get shared. I don't care if you, we have a natural urge to be the first person to share news. Be that person who verifies information, especially in times of crisis, that you take a moment to pause. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not design the believer to be fearful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designs the believer to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. In my city, people were asking the question, should we cancel some of our day-to-day -day masjid events because of what's happening in Palestine? And the response was they got, they got was, Alhamdulillah, you're not in Gaza. What would you have done if you were in Gaza? We're halfway across the world. What do you have to be afraid of? This is a time of engagement. This is a time of conversation. Alhamdulillah, yes, incidents happen, but that shouldn't become the overarching narrative that we live our lives with. That you take everything into account, recognizing that at the end of the day, you have to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing will afflict you other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling this boy that know that everything has been written. And then he says, to emphasize that, he says, رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامِ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحُفِ The pen has been lifted and the ink has dried. But there's another version of this hadith. The version that's in a tirmidhi ends. But there's another version of this hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَاءِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ He says, know Allah during times of comfort, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know you during difficulty. And then he says, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ This is a beautiful statement also to be inscribed in all of our hearts. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, know that nasr, victory, comes with sabr. What does sabr mean? General translation is patience, but sabr is such a bigger word than patience. 
it is much, much, much bigger. Sabr includes resilience. It includes perseverance. It includes discipline. It includes dedication. It includes grit. Sabr is to meet obstacles and to endure. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, know that victory comes with endurance. You know, if you were to take people who are successful in any field of human endeavor, any field, whether they're athletes or whether they're academics or whether they're entrepreneurs no, or they're politicians, no matter what field of human success, you will find that they are different in almost every factor. They're different in their intelligence. They're different in their resources. They're different in their their opportunities even. And yet, the one quality that is shared amongst all of them is sabr. They failed on day one, they tried again on day two. They didn't feel like studying, they didn't feel like reviewing, they didn't feel like working out, they didn't feel like, they didn't feel like doing it. And whereas one person quits because they don't feel like doing it anymore, that person endures. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he says, nobody has ever been given anything more expansive or comprehensive than sabr. This quality, if you can develop it, it will be the difference between a 2.0 and a 4.0. I'm telling you. It will be the difference between success in your life and failure. This one quality. We have a child psychologist named Dr. Leonard Sachs. He said, after studying who knows how many children? He said the one quality that we were able to determine defines a person's success is that discipline that they've been able to acquire by the age of 12. The ability to delay gratification for the purpose of something that is higher. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi says, know that victory comes with sabr. Now, it's been three weeks since this campaign against the people of Gaza. And I don't know what it's like here. But I tell you, we have to have sabr. Don't stop sharing. Don't stop talking. Don't stop protesting. Don't stop raising the alarms. After three weeks, you might find people start to drag their feet a little bit. It's, it's going on. I was down on day one. I was down on day two. I was down on day three. I was down on day four. But 20 days, 21 days. And this is the crucial moment where we all have to remind each other to have sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْصَبْرِ I want you to appreciate how great of an attribute this is in securing benefit in this life and the next. It is sabr. We have to endure. You know, people were passing around, right? Those verses of Ali Imran talking about the, the, the loss that turned into a victory, of course, at Uhud. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end Ali Imran with? The last verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِصْبِرُوا O oh, you who believe, have sabr. And then he says, وَصَابِرُوا Sabiru means to compete in sabr. For me to defeat any enemy, I have to outlast them. I have to outlast them. Antar ibn Abi Shaddad, Antar ibn Abi Shaddad was a famous, famous Arab warrior. Never lost a battle. And so a person asked him and he said, how is it that you've never lost a battle? Like, what, what do you do that made you undefeated? And he said, let me show you. You put your finger in my mouth, and I'll bite as hard as I can. And I'll put my finger in your mouth and you bite as hard as you can. Sounds like a really dumb exercise, but they do it. This guy's getting his thumb torn to pieces by Antar's molars. And Antar is also getting his thumb bit by this guy. The guy's holding on as long as he can. Finally, the pain is too excruciating. So what does he do? He lets go. Antar says to him, and Antar lets go too. And Antar says to him, he says, I was this close to letting go. But I decided to hold on just a little bit longer. And you let go. That's why I never lose a battle. I have the ability to endure my opponent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Isbiru wa sabiru. Out sabr the others. Outlast the others. Warabitu And hold fast. Stand fast. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ And have taqwa of Allah. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ If you have these two qualities, if you have incredible determination, patience, perseverance, and then beyond that, you have taqwa of Allah, you're seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's support. If you have these two qualities, you win. 
And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invokes these two qualities in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amnu, sta'inu bil sabri wa salah. Twice in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, Oh you who believe, seek help in sabr and salah. That's how you seek help. You've got calamities in your life. Your world is being turned upside down. You've got two best friends. Number one is salah. You're turning to Allah. The salah is meant to uplift. It is, it is meant to unload your burdens. It's not, supposed, it's not supposed to be a burden. You unload your burdens in the salah. And then number two, you have endurance. You will overcome this obstacle. It too shall pass. You just need to hold on. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ وَأَنَّ الْفَرَجَ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ وَأَنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Finally, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and know that relief comes with the difficulty. There's no difficulty except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings ease with it. And know that with every hardship is ease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Yusr twice. And so the scholars said, with every hardship, two ease is cupped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing about ease. And so we ask Allah azza wa jal to grant us patience, to grant us perseverance, and to grant us the taqwa of Allah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad. Aqulu ma sami'tum wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu al-ghafur rahim.